Hello, my name is John Bromit of Crusoe Design Co. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your very own soft enamel pin mock-up. Over the years, I've created tons of different pins, but before I produce them, it's really helpful to see what they're gonna look like in a real world usage. So creating photorealistic mock-ups is something that I really love to do. It's a great way to show off to your clients, post them on social media, use them for a product pre-order, or basically any other reason that you can think of. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do it using smart objects. And the great thing about smart objects is it allows you to bring in new artwork and everything automatically updates. So you only have to build the file one time and then you can try all kinds of different pin artwork and see what you think is gonna look cool. And you can basically just copy and paste and everything will auto update all the different effects that I will show you how to make. And if you're busy and you don't have time to actually create the file on your own, the good news is I will have it for sale for a very low price and I will put the info below for you to check out. And my version of it will come with multiple different types of metals, backdrops, photo filters, and some great photography by Shire Designs that are really gonna make your pins pop. So without further ado, let's hop into the computer and I'll show you how to make this very cool mock-up. Okay, so as you can see here, I've created my document already and I'm going to go backwards and break down exactly how I made this. This is gonna be part of the product that I'm actually gonna be selling in my version. I've got multiple different metal colors and I've got different types of shadows and photo filters and different backdrops and so on. I'm gonna show you the basic way to create this so that you can make it yourself. And then the great thing about Photoshop is you can manipulate and test everything that you wanna try. So let's go ahead and build our new document. I'm gonna drag this out of the way and show you how to do it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make mine in inches and you can leave it in your RGB format. I'm gonna make mine 15 by 10 inches and 300 DPI. I just want it to be really clean and clear. If I were gonna print it out at up to 15 inches, it would be crystal clear and it'll be nice and high resolution for on your screen. Okay, so now that we've got our document, one of the first things we wanna do is add in a background. So I'll put the link below to this, but I'm gonna give you some links to some free imagery that you can get off of Unsplash. You can, of course, use your own photography, or you could even try and use AI. When I can, I like to use real photos. So thanks to Eric McLean for this photo. So once we've got our photo downloaded, we're just gonna drag it in here. Now I'm imagining that my pin is gonna be somewhere in here, and I want it to be fairly large, so I'm gonna make this quite a bit larger. We're really gonna blow this up. It may be a little bit too blown up for the quality, but I think it'll be just fine for using on our screen, like so. Once we've done that, we can double click our background and just hit delete because we don't need that layer. And you could rename this to background if you wanted to. From there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create two new layers. We're gonna go over here and hit plus, plus. And we're gonna right click on this first layer and we're going to convert to smart object and we're gonna right click on the second layer and we'll convert that to smart object as well. So we're gonna call this first one pin fill, as in the colors that go within the pin. I'll we'll call this second one pin outline. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'm gonna grab my actual pin artwork from Adobe Illustrator. It's okay if you create yours in Adobe Photoshop, you basically follow the same principle, but I've got mine in Illustrator already. So here's a bunch of pins I've made. I think I'm gonna use this one the skull and the arrow. So all I've done here is taken that and I've added a box behind it. Mine is three inches by three inches. So we're gonna drag over here holding option to copy it. It's Alt on a PC. I'm gonna hold shift and again, option or Alt on a PC and click and drag it over here. So I have two copies of the same pin. We wanna make sure that everything is outlines and merged. So if you need to go to object, expand, do that a couple times maybe, you might need to expand appearance. And then using the Pathfinder, we're going to click Merge a couple times. And then do the same thing on this one. I already know mine's expanded, so I don't need to do that. So now we've got these two, they should be identical. And you could do that before you copy and paste it. We're going to double click to go within this layer. And I'm going to use my magic wand tool, which is Y on my keyboard. I'm going to select the black. And then I'm going to hit Command X. That just deletes it. And it copies it to the clipboard at the same time. Now I'm going to hit Command A or Control A on a PC and delete everything else. Lastly, I'm going to hit Command F, which pastes it in place. Again, that's Control F on a PC. And we can double click to get out of here. Now over here, we want to do a similar thing. We're going to come in here using our magic wand, Y on our keyboard. We're going to select the black and then we're just going to hit delete. We don't need it on this version. Double click to exit. 
Now all we need to do is turn these red rectangles into a no fill. So selecting them both, we'll go over here and click none. If any of the two panels that I've shown here so far aren't showing up for you, just hit window and go down to Pathfinder to make that showing and click color to make sure that's showing. So now we're ready to jump back into Photoshop. So the first thing I wanna do is copy my outline here. So Command C, Control C on a PC, and we'll go back to Photoshop. And in my pin outline, it's important that we double click to go into a smart object. And I'm gonna hit Command V, or Control V to paste. And I want to select smart object just in case I need to edit it in the future. Now the size here is gonna be, depending on how you created it, I find that about 250% is pretty good. I want it to take up most of the artboard. You go a little more, a little less, whatever you're comfortable with. But make sure that you memorize whatever you put in here because once we hit enter and save, which is Command S or Control S, we're gonna pop back in this file and now we're gonna double click the pin. Here we have to go back over to Adobe Illustrator and we're gonna select that other box in the other part of our artwork. Command C, which is Control C on a PC. And we're gonna go Command V, Control V. And we do wanna do a smart object again. And we also importantly need to make this 250% as well. Make sure that you've got this clicked so that you maintain your aspect ratio. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit enter and then Command S to save. We can close that. And now we have got our artwork in here and importantly, we have it on two separate layers. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one metal and it's going to be a black metal is because that's what I use the most and that's what I think looks the coolest. In my actual mock-up file, if we bring that back here for a second, you'll see that I put my pin outline and my fill outline with a fill of zero. And that's just so people know to copy and paste their artwork into there and they can hide all this. But it allows them to come in here and I have duplicates where all of my effects are actually applied and then they can change the metal. But we're gonna simplify that for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna start with our fill. We're gonna double click on this layer to open up our layer styles and please follow along with these settings to make sure that yours looks very cool. I'll move it over just a little bit so we can see what we're doing over here. The first thing we wanna do is click bevel and emboss. And you can see a lot of my settings are pre popping up. So basically you wanna make your settings match mine. And then of course you can play around with them if you wanna try and do something different. I've got my style set as an inner bevel. My technique is smooth and I have it at 450% depth. The direction is down. I've got the size at 25 and the soften at zero. This is personal preference. You can see here, if we soften it up, it really makes that shadow kind of blend nicely to the white. I found that really having a really sharp shadow looked a little more realistic to me. For our shading, you can have global light selected or not, it's not important. And you want 60%, 25%. It's gonna have the light source coming from up here. For my contour, I just have it set to linear and my screen is at 75% white. And my shadow is multiply black 25%. Pretty straightforward for those settings. I do also have a satin added on top of it. I've got that at multiply black 5%, 90 degrees, and we've got the distance at 29 and the size at 50. Anti-alias is on and invert is on. And again, the contour is linear. Then we have a gradient overlay. This is pretty subtle. I've gone ahead and I've already made it a gradient and I've just added a bunch of grays, different shades. And again, it's really subtle in this case. It can give it a little bit of a metal look and you could brighten that up and make it a lot more obvious. You can see there, I've got this as this is really subtle, probably unnecessary step. So you could skip this if you wanted to. Okay, and from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select a drop shadow. Now this is something, if you come over here, you can click and drag to move your shadow around depending on your light source in your photo. So it kind of looks like the light's coming from this top right. So I'd bump the shadow down to my bottom left. And once we click okay, what you also can do is come down here and hide it because I'm going to show you a secondary way to make a drop shadow. So in this quick example, I'm going to make a new background and I'm going to fill it with white. Now if we come up here to our pin fill, I'm actually just going to duplicate it. I'm going to drag this underneath and we're going to call this shadow. And we're going to double click because we actually do not need these effects. What I do want is this color overlay and I want to turn it all the way to black like so. And then you can click OK. 
From there, we're going to go Command T, which is Control T. And we're going to click and hold down Command and drag this out over to the side like so. We want a shadow that's really going to fall down on the ground. I'll hit Enter and we'll pull this back up to here. If you think you want a little dramatic, you can maneuver that around like so. And then we can go up to Filter, Blur, down to Gaussian Blur. And then you can click how much blur you want to add to that. And then what I would do is probably set it to multiply and it will show up nicely on your background. And you can edit that and of course you can make it as light as you want and subtle as you want. Double click on that blur that you just added and then you can come in and add or subtract the amount of blur that you've used. So I'm going to bring in a background that I got from Shire Designs and it's going to show a good example of why that shadow works a lot better. I'm going to drag that down, delete that. Now as you can see, if we hide this shadow effect and we simply turn on our drop shadow, it doesn't really, it's just going from the actual image itself. So it's not really very realistic to what would be happening in this photo. So if we hide that, when we put this type of shadow on it, it kind of makes it look like it's propped up. And this again, you can play with. So Command T, hit OK. And then I'm holding down Command, which is controlling your PC, and I'm dragging this sort of top white square. And you could bring it all the way out here if you wanted to. You could drop it down this way if the shadow were coming this way. And then you can make it look like that. In my case, I think somewhere around here is good. And again, you can play with it as much to your liking, but it really just makes it look like it's floating nicely. And you've got a kickstand here that's making it set off the background very nicely. So that's an advanced shadow. I'm going to hide that, hide this for now, put back on our other one. I think this one will work just fine. Go here and drag it down just a little bit. And of course, play with the opacity. When in doubt, a little more subtle is always better. Now here's another optional step. I like to add a little bit of texture. If we zoom in here on the white, I've got a pen fill selected. We can go to filter, noise, and add noise. It just gives it a little bit of texture. And at 4% on uniform, monochromatic, I think that's okay. We can zoom out here and it just looks a little more realistic to me. I like a little bit of texture. I like a little bit of noise. So we should be pretty good for our pin fill there. So now it's time to look at our pin outline. So we'll double click on our pin outline here. And once again, we're gonna start off with a bevel and a boss. Now, this doesn't look very good or realistic to me. So change your settings as follows. We're gonna put the style to an outer bevel. We're gonna make the technique chisel hard. And then we're gonna make the depth about 170. We want the direction to be down. We're gonna make our size five. We can do a soften of maybe four would probably be okay. Angle, I'm gonna make it minus 50 and 20. But you can change this to match the lighting of the photo. So again, we decided our light source was up here. So if we click in this little circle and kind of drag it to the opposite corner, you'll notice now it looks like the light is hitting here and casting shadows down here. So that will look more realistic for this photo. And if you bring in a different backdrop, you can just move around this to match that same light source. And make sure your fill and your outline basically both have the same light source happening. So our screen, I'm gonna lighten this a little bit. I'll do 50% and I'll make the opacity 60% for the multiply. I think that makes it kind of pop nicely. So the next thing I wanna do is add a contour. We want this one to be fairly subtle. I think a 50% is good and we're gonna keep our contour to linear just like that. Then we're gonna head down and we're actually gonna add a stroke. It's not showing here for me, so we'll just go to effects here, come down here and click stroke and it'll pop back up as you can see there. So this is right, I want my size 4%. I'm gonna put my position to outside. I want my blend mode set to normal and we'll go about 40%. And we're gonna turn the color to white. I like that effect, it's kind of making that metal really pop. Now I'm gonna put a color overlay on this and the purpose of that is depending on when you bring in your artwork, whatever your color, your fill is, you don't have to have the fill as black. You can if you want to and do that in Illustrator ahead of time. But this allows you to make your fill, your color can be black, and then your fill in Illustrator can be any color you want. And it'll be automatically done in black once you bring it into Photoshop and it live updates. So this kind of just makes it easier to update your artwork in the future. So in order to build this, you could come into basics and just select a simple black and white like so. 
And then you basically just want to click and drag a bunch of different pieces. So we're going to click here, double tap, you can just make that white for example. And then maybe you click here, double tap, make it black. And then we're going to play around the, the intensity of this in just a moment. So let's just jump ahead while I create this. So we could try something like this, hit OK, and then you can bring up your opacity. Then I actually need to go back to my color overlay and turn it to color from blend mode and that will allow my gradient to actually show through. And from here, then we can really refine our gradient a little bit more. You can see the highlight here and highlight here. So you can change the angle to your choosing. We'll go something like that. And in my case, I want it pretty subtle, but let's just crank it up so you can really see. Let's hit OK if we zoom out here. You can see that gives the metal a really shiny look, shiny glossy type fill, just like so. And again, you can play with this and get the angle that you think looks right, or you can just have it turned off completely. I'm gonna go with a quite subtle, but not completely invisible, at least not on my screen. So go ahead and click OK. And once again, if we zoom in here, I like to add that little bit of texture. So we're gonna filter noise and we're gonna add noise. You go to whatever you think looks good. I'm gonna say 10 is pretty good for me. You can see it just adds that little bit of noise. It's kind of like a nice film grain on a photo. It kind of almost makes it seem like it's extra high quality when you zoom in and you can see that noise just a little bit. And just like that, we've got a pretty darn photorealistic looking mock-up. In my version that I have for sale, I've also created additional options and additional textures to really give you lots of variety. But I basically made a silver version and a gold version, which you can do following similar steps to what I've done here. And you can experiment, of course, as you choose. Now, one of the great things about creating this is we can simply hop back into Illustrator and we can grab a new design. Let's say it's our bear here. And I've already gone ahead and pre-created these. So I'm just going to copy and paste by double clicking on our pin outline, pasting it here as a smart object. I'm going to go about 250% again, make sure I hide my other one, save. Then I'm going to repeat the process over here. And you can see even while I'm talking, I'm moving relatively quickly, but not as fast as I'd go if I wasn't trying to teach this. And just like that, we've completely updated our pin. And of course, if you find this too big, rather than manually coming back in here and resizing it, you could simply select these two layers. I would add your shadow too. select all three layers. Click OK, and then you can just resize as needed. Another little pro tip, I think, is we'll move this guy over here, bring him in just a little. My little pro tip is make him on an angle a little bit, you know? Pins are never sitting totally flat, are they? So something like that, I think, looks pretty darn cool. And if you were to export this, you're gonna see you've got really good high resolution graphics, and these shadows look great. And again, it's Photoshop, so if you wanna change anything, or manipulate the artwork in any way, you can do so on the fly. All right, hopefully you found that interesting. So I am selling my version of the mock-up with all the things I mentioned earlier. They're gonna be available, the links will be below because they're gonna be on multiple different websites and my own website, which is crusodesignco.com. So just check out the info below if you do wanna purchase it. Also like, comment, subscribe, that kind of stuff, and I'll keep making videos. Thanks everyone, see you next time.